Have you watched Skywalker's A Love Story on Netflix? This isn't even the type of documentaries that I normally watch, but I got some things that I want to talk to you guys about from a licensed therapist perspective. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, hey, but if you are a returning subscriber, you already know how my review videos go. Full disclaimer, there's probably going to be some spoilers in here. So if you have not watched Skywalkers, press pause, go on over to Netflix, watch the documentary. It is about an hour and 40 minutes long, so less than two hours. And then come back because we got to chat about some things in the comment section. Tell me, what did you think about Skywalkers? What did you think about Angela, Vanya, hopefully I'm saying his name right, them climbing up, doing illegal stuff. We're going to get into it right now. But the first thing that I have to talk to you guys about is upbringing and childhood experiences. There ain't no way that you can tell me that Angela and Vanya's upbringing did not impact them as individuals, adults, and also their relationship and even their fuel for wanting to be Skywalkers, AKA rooftoppers. Because with Angela, we seen her parents be involved in the circus, they were performers, they loved acrobats and, you know, acrobatics and all of those things. And so she grew up not necessarily having a lot as far as money and things of that nature, but she grew up seeing her parents being passionate about a thing. And seeing her parents be passionate about that gave her a desire to want to be passionate about a thing too. She got into acrobatics, all of those things that ultimately allowed her to scale these buildings and be on top of the world sitting on top of the world, top of the world, top. Okay, I digress. See, one thing that I've seen with Angela is trauma. She's seen her parents be at the height of their career. She was drawn to the circus because obviously that's what was familiar to her. But she also experienced a lot of trauma because her dad left her mama for another woman. Then she saw her mom go into a severe depression, stopped working, wasn't feeding her. Basically, her grandmother had to step in, provide for her, take care of her because her mom could no longer do it. As a young child, regardless of what y'all want to say, we know that has an impact on how you view your mom, how you view yourself, but also how you view romantic relationships. How can a man who loves you and buys you all of the things and, you know, has this career with you leave you for somebody else? just like that. While I understand that there's probably a different culture and all of those things, I don't know if the grandmother told Angela some things that were healthy. She kept saying, do you only trust yourself? Don't believe in nobody else. Don't let anybody else tell you anything. Be strong, do what you wanna do. And while those things can be true, that also makes you be disconnected and lose connectivity from other people. We appreciate the grandma stepping in and taking care of Angela, but also the life lessons that she gave her wasn't the healthiest. And with Vanya, he basically seemed like a loner. He said, you know, him and his parents and his family was a little bit difficult. So he basically started hanging out with the kids around the block and they used to hang out and drink in these abandoned buildings. And so while he would go there and wouldn't necessarily drink, he loved scaling the building and exploring the building and going higher and higher and that is what fueled his desire to be a rooftopper. The second thing that we have to talk about is risk taking behavior. This was the riskiest thing I have ever seen anybody do. We talk about risky behavior, like maybe gambling or doing drugs or, you know, being in gangs, you know, things of that nature. Going hundreds of even thousands up on a building at the very top to take a picture, to take a selfie, to do a little dance move just for the sake of social media is wild. And it was a trip to me that Angela and Vanya were actually competition at first. She seen all of the rooftoppers, they were mostly males and she allowed Vanya to stand out and say, this one is different from the other ones. He's really making a career out of this. He seems like he can pay. He's doing something that nobody else has done. So she's basically from afar making him her competition. Whatever he would do, she would try to one up him, right? And then a moment came where he reached out to her and was just like, yo, I need you for this project. They paying 500 euros, which I looked it up, ain't that much money. Is it just me or you would have to pay me hundreds of thousands of dollars to go on top of the tallest buildings in the world, in some cases, just for a picture, just for a video. If I'm risking my life, you, I mean, nothing is worth your life, obviously, but 500 euros is essentially like maybe $550, y'all, in U.S. money. <laughs> so that ain't that much money. I had to Google it, like, how much is 500 euros? And I'm like, 
you risk your life for $500. Do you know there's content creators like you and I who get paid thousands of dollars to make content in our living room, in our office, at our house? without risking our lives, like y'all tripping. So once they did that project together, they saw very easily that they were connected, that they had a lot in common. And I talked to you guys a lot about how their studies have shown that opposites initially attract people together, right? This is why we see like bad boys liking good girls, good girls liking bad guys, because it's so intriguing. They're so different. But long-term, what keeps couples and people together are similarities. And you have to have some very, <laughs> similar things in common to be with somebody who is a skywalker or a rooftopper. You also have to be with somebody who loves this little trade or this little whatever you want to call it. I ain't even gonna call it a job, but this little hobby, what is this? I don't know, a career? I don't know what to call it. Either way, it's just too risky for me. One of the reporters asked Angela, do you fear death? And her response was yes. And I'm like, I don't really think you do, sis, or I don't you really understand what could happen if you just have one little incy bit, one little teeny tiny incident of human error. If you slip, if you let things go, if you don't put or don't hold on tight enough, you could literally end your life. They had so much trust in the structure of these buildings that I was blown away. They would go, it would be snowing and raining and windy and they're still climbing up these ladders in Dubai, in Malaysia, in Thailand, all of these different places. And I'm like, how do y'all know that these screws is tight enough? How do y'all know that this isn't going to break? Some of the abandoned buildings that they were scaling looked old and raggedy and rusted. And I'm like, how do you know there isn't that the structure is safe? But that's what risk taking behavior does. It makes you do some risky things. And I'm not even gonna lie, even though I wouldn't do it and it seems too much for me, I was amazed that people would be that fearless to put their lives and risk their lives, you know, for one, for social media followers, for clout, for sponsors, for travel. And I understand that they're getting paid for it, but they're not getting paid enough for them to do that. And you have to have some type of stamina, some type of strength. They were climbing up an hour at a time to get some of the height that they got on some of the buildings to make it to the very, very top. And I'm like, after the first three, three steps, I would have been like, oh, I'm tired. My arms hurt, my feet hurt. I can't go on no more. Let's go back down, please. But they kept going. And so it takes a lot of physical stamina, but also mental strength to do that. If I'm being honest, a little bit of crazy too, because these are all illegal activities. You cannot be trespassing. <laughs> this is breaking and entering at this point. You can't do that and think that you're not going to have some type of repercussions. We've seen them go to jail because they were trespassing and they got busted and caught when they were in a building that they shouldn't have been in. Breaking locks, opening doors with pliers, putting things in places that they shouldn't be, like that isn't okay. And they were bold because they did a lot of these in other countries. And we know outside of the US and other places around the world, some of their laws are very, very strict and you can get into really big trouble and be in jail for a long time for you know minor things. So they were very bold in order to take those types of risk in other places. The third and last thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about, I feel like I could have included so much more in this video, but for the sake of this, I wanna to talk to you guys about trust. Not only do they have to trust each other, they also have to trust themselves. I don't care what y'all say, if y'all watch this, I feel like he was more concerned about her and her well being then she was concerned about him. There was so many times where he was like, okay, are you okay? I'm checking in, don't do that. I'm worried about you, I'm concerned. Hold on, let me help you, you know, and doing all of those things. And she was like, no, I can do it myself. Stop telling me what to do, stop nitpicking me. And I'm like, this man is trying to love on you and care about you and basically make sure you don't die. So why are you being so difficult? I knew, especially as a person who specializes in relationships, that once they started arguing and there was discord and they were breaking up and getting back together and having all of these difficulties in their relationship, I said, this is going to impact their ability to be rooftoppers, to be skywalkers. Because if you have broken trust in your relationship and you are 100% depending on somebody to hold you, to hold you up, to support you, to not let you fall when you are literally on the top of the highest buildings in the world, 
And if you don't have trust in your regular life, how am I gonna trust you up there? I think in the beginning of their relationship, they had a lot of trust. They were doing all of the things. And I was just like, oh, this is really, really good. They're the perfect duo for this because they trust each other. But as the relationship started to unravel and they were having moments of discord and he was questioning like, I don't think you should do this no more, sis. Because that last time when they were practicing to go on into the highest building, I think it was in Malaysia. I, I can't even pronounce it, child. 118, whatever they called it when they were practicing for that and she went into the other building and she had that little nervous breakdown and she was like, my hands are locking up. I, I'm scared. I, I don't know what to do. I can't move. I can't go on anymore. I'm nervous. And I was like, this is it for you, girl. Because one slip, one wrong move, one putting in your foot in the wrong place, one slip of sweaty palms could be the end of your life. Because they don't have any harnesses. I forgot to tell y'all that. They do all of this without harnesses, nothing to protect them, nothing that they can grab onto. In most cases, they didn't have any rope or any type of securing device. And so they were really playing Russian roulette with their lives. So my final thoughts on this is I never ever would have paid attention to some type of documentary like this. But because I am a lover of all things about love, when I see a love story, I say, oh, well, let me see the correlation between love, this relationship, and them being rooftoppers. I can't even imagine this having any type of longevity. Like I already mentioned before, like, what is this? Is this a hobby? Is this a career? Like, what are you guys calling this? I understand that you guys are getting paid, but you only can do this for so long. One age is going to catch up to you. Whether we want to believe it or not, the older you get, the less, you know, your eyesight is keen, you know, your strength may go down a little bit. You're just not at the optimal shape that you are when you are in your 20s and 30s. We also seeing Angela kind of like have this little bit of fear of heights, you know, and so that fear was creeping in, even though she didn't initially have that. So I was like, this is very concerning. So I was with Vanya on this. I was like, after y'all do this Malaysia one, this is the last one. Please do not try to do another one because I don't want to be on social media scrolling and see Skywalkers fall to their death. You know, like I don't want to see that. That was a real thing because we've seen a lot of their friends and the people that they, you know, ran with in their little crew early on that they were dying one by one. They were falling off of buildings. They were doing risky behavior. And I'm like, this really could be you. I don't know if they understood their humanity or understood how blessed they were to be able to do so many of these different stunts and not be hurt or injured thus far. But my question for both of them is what's next? <laughs> what's your backup plan when you can't do this anymore? Y'all don't have no regular job. Y'all probably ain't got no resume. <laughs> like, what are you going to do next? Is it going to be some type of social media creation? Because I know she did that when they were in between jobs because of COVID, but think about it. Well, what is the next phase of their life going to look like if this no longer is an option? So thank you so much for watching another review video on my channel. Please make sure to stick around, like, comment, subscribe, watch some other movie and TV show reviews, and I will see you next time. Be blessed.